I know there's been a lot of talk, a great deal of fans wanting to punt on Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey. I'm not ready to go there. Here's why. They technically just finished their second season together, right? Mm -hmm. But they've only played a whopping 68 games together out of a possible 164 between these past two years. So they played 57 last year together and only 11 the previous year because Cade got hurt, right? Out right. for the season. So everybody's jumping shit on them. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous to me, bro. Like, have we not learned anything from the NBA Finals? Just take a look at Boston, right? They've been maligned for the past, what, seven years for not being able to get over the hump? Playoff run after playoff run over and over and over. They just couldn't get it done. Everybody's saying, you know, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, it wouldn't work. I mean, they don't fit. They need the ball. Their skill sets overlap too much. Yada, 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 right? And now, like, for context, before everybody loses it, I understand. I understand. The situation is much different from ours. I get it. I get it. They've been a top team in the East for the past six, seven years. They're contending every season. I get it. I understand. We've been at the bottom of the East for the past seven years. I get it. But the point is that everybody was ready to punt on them. Mm -hmm. And I want to give a shout out too to Jalen Rose, bro. A couple of years ago, yeah, he was the one that he was one of the few too that said, "Don't break them up." He said, "Do not break this duo up. Find a way to build around them." Whether you're a Celtic fan, whether you're a member of the media, you still were foolish if you ever once said, thought, or considered breaking up Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They're both young, dog. And a lot of people, including myself at the time, was like, I, I just didn't see it. But Brad Stevens understood that, bro. Like, instead of breaking them up, he built around them properly. It took them seven years, right, of tweaking the roster. Marcus Smart, you know, moving him, all these different moves, changing coaches, adding depth, um, putting in the right system with Joe Mazzulla, losing in the finals to Golden State. All these different things like contributed to them finally getting that chip. Seven years, right? It only took three with Brad Stevens, though, yeah. to transform that team. So shout out to Trajan Landon. Hopefully we can get it done, right? Mm -hmm. But that's kind of where my, I'm at, bro. Like, I understand it's easier to be patient with your team when they're in contention, like Boston. Mm -hmm. But you, I just don't think you can break up this backcourt after 68 games, bro. The construction has to be better. They need spacing. Hayden, and Jaden, right? They got to continue to play together, learn each other off the court, on the court. They got to get that chemistry right. Jalen and Jason Tatum, they always call each other brothers. I want Cade and Jaden to have the opportunity to know each other long enough to build that kind of chemistry. It takes time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it often <laughs> takes longer than fans want, but it takes time. I just don't understand... Why everybody in such a rush? I understand the record, but come on, man. Like, it's 68 games. You haven't even played a full season worth of games yet. Everybody's trying to punt on them already. I um, almost had a, a old king moment, man. I was about to go off, but I'm not. Listen, one of the words you said, construction, right? Let's say that after we see a team that's finally constructed correctly. One of the things that Jalen Rose mentioned with that Boston team is the fact that what they needed at the time when he said that, and they finally got it right. My thing is, you know, you mentioned how many games, right? When it comes to Pistons fans, we have a problem with one word, completion. We never complete a process when it comes to players. For some reason, we just, we're the most impatient fan. And, and I don't want to hear the, look how long we've been here. There's teams that's been in the hole longer than us. Right. And they, they're still not as bad as we are in Detroit as fans. Right. Let's let's see them get a, a, a nice amount of time together. But at the same time, let's let's get some players here. You know, some some real players. Right. Uh, right. Some real examples. Not yep. some Corey Joseph's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some real guards that can come in here. Veteran guards, man. Some some real veteran wings. Yep. Let's get some real guys in here. Some real guys in here, bro. Shout out to AB. Appreciate you showing up and showing down, my dog. You know, it's funny. I was just watching a little bit earlier. I was watching LeBron versus Young Celtics, right? And it's just funny watching them then and just seeing how much they've grown from then. You know, I heard somebody say, somebody or somebody said in the comments, somebody said that they're not comparable to Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum because they can defend their position. They haven't always been able to do that at this level. And they had vets on their team like Marcus Smart to teach them how to play defense. We don't have that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, they're not a perfect fit, but they have a team built around them to where it doesn't matter because they can maximize your skill sets. You can even say, okay, defense, fine. You can even say, 
Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. They're not a perfect fit. Right, but they have a team built around them to where it doesn't matter because they can maximize their skill sets. Deuce, one of the key factors that we're not talking about is you look at some of the coaches that have ran through Boston. They've had some good coaches over there. Right. Our Great situation point. is a little bit different here. You Very know, good point. We're still waiting for that guy. You know, right. hopefully, you know, if Monty's going to stay like we think he is, mm -hmm. hopefully he's in the right mindset. Hopefully we can get some things going. Hopefully we can get the right players over here. You know what I'm saying? But those guys had some great coaches at their disposal over there. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I agree with Elton. We don't have an identity. We haven't yeah. had one in how long? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't have a calling card at all. Nothing to hang our hats on. Mm -hmm. That's true. You have to get an identity first. You can't become something without a damn identity. Yeah. My thing is this, bro. You got to build around your young stars, bro, especially here. Stars are hard to come by here, man, unless you overpay them at free agency. And even then, their incentive is money. We heard what Coach said. Respect, but we heard what Coach said. The same could apply to players who are coming here who have nothing invested here. They're not going to come here because they just want to play for the Detroit Pistons unless there's something here. That's what I think people are, are missing. You know what the biggest difference was, bro, between the Mavs and the Celtics? Jason Kidd, Luka Doncic. Kyrie, they all said the same thing, bro, in their post-game interviews when they were asked what led to their demise in the finals at the end of the day. They all said the same exact thing, bro. One word. Time. The Celtics have had years. They've had plenty of time. That was the difference. The Mavs have five months to try to figure it all out as a unit in one season. Boston has been together, their big two, for seven years. Seven years. So this offseason, I'm hoping that Trajan builds out this roster in a way that plays to their strengths. Yes, they have to get better in defense. Yes. Yes, they both have flaws. Yes. Yes, their games do kind of overlap a little bit. Yes. All those things could have been said about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown when they first got together. All of it. All of it. Our biggest need this offseason is shooting. Whether it comes from within... With the help of you know our new assistant Fred Vincent, or whether we go out in free agency, get a couple of vets who can shoot the ball, that should be the focus. I can guarantee you, bro, every Celtics fan this morning will tell you that it was worth the wait. They don't care about them seven years and not getting to the finals and winning. You know why? Because they just won. And this is the team that's been in the hunt and had their hearts broken year after year, being down on three to the Heat, winning three straight, having Jason Tatum get hurt. In game seven and losing we haven't sniffed a playoff run in 15 plus years right i get the urgency but not at the expense of breaking up something that hasn't even been given a full 82 game season to figure out yet y'all come on i think monty williams he's got to figure it out and i hope trajan landon is telling him that trajan is gonna go shopping this offseason for the correct pieces to put around these guys and i hope the decision to keep monty was contingent on him building around and playing those two I'm done. So when it comes to the situation we have currently in our backcourt, our backcourt needs certain types of pieces around them. We know that Jay Nivey needs those pieces just as much as Kay Cunningham does. Max. For him to be the style player that he is, they need the correct spacing. They don't need guys crowding when he's attacking the basket too, because that's where he thrives. So, like I said, let's just wait. Let's just wait on that situation, man. Let's just wait, man. Let's wait and see. Um, let's give Langdon a chance to do what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. and, and let's see these boys, you know, be put in a better position because we just haven't seen them put in a great one. You hear a few of the fans, they mentioned the injuries on behalf of Kate, right? I think y'all get hung up on that one season. Yep. It's not the way that a lot of people make it seem. I, I think we need to just let that go too. It's not like he's been having some devastating injuries. Right, right. Who's who's 100%. playing all 82 games around here these days? I'm about <laughs> to start just now because of the incentives. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> but before so, that, I'm with you 100%. Yeah, I said I, one of the key things that I think a lot of the fans also toss aside, y'all got to forget, there was a lot of uh, Sweet stakes, like the, the the Wimby sweet stakes. Yeah, you know, we had a lot of pick situations going on too. So hey, you know, tell a lot of, of staff, hey, a lot of 
A lot of sprain, a lot of sprained esophagus right. on the right, right, right. On the report. <laughs> right, a lot of pinky, pinky toe injuries going you know on. Hang there. <laughs> right, we all knew forget. what it was. Everybody yeah. knew what it was, man. Let's not forget. So. I mean, it was. I'm just saying, bro. It was just to kind of circle back. It was tough watching Jaden Ivy year before last out there most nights by himself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was the only guy that season that really played 60 plus games. A lot of our guys were hurt in and out, and the guys he was playing with. Let's be honest, man. No shade, but they weren't NBA level players. Nah. And they were getting swapped in, in and out. In his rookie season, when he's got the ball in his hands, he can't develop any chemistry with anybody because these guys are coming. How many different rotations did we have? Or starting? Remember, we had a ton of different starting lineups. Seven or eight. Ridiculous. So you're gonna give, you're gonna judge a young point guard off of that, <laughs> a, a rookie, a rookie guard off of that. Who hasn't even fully come into himself as far as learning the point guard position and you're gonna judge him off of that he can't build chemistry with any of these guys they're in the g league one week the next week they're back you know what i mean like it was a complete shuffle you can't build any chemistry with anybody that way you just can't he didn't have his guys and that's a big part of what i think people are missing he was playing by he was out there by himself man so yes he has a, he has deficiencies yes he has to work on a lot yes absolutely but i'm not moving him no way Absolutely not. Too soon. Eric Vincent, man. Eric Vincent. Even e. Going on, Eric. Now for my self esteem early, man. I appreciate that, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's been nice to unplug a little bit after the season, but now things are ramping up. It's a little bit more optimism going on with the team. Uh, I think finally seeing some bit of direction. So uh, it's been fun getting into the mode with everything, man. Getting back to covering uh, something outside the sorrow we had to deal with last season. <laughs> So I got a couple of rapid fire questions for you, um, so you can catch up with to where we were. The K Nivy coexistence. What's your thoughts on that? Oh man, um, you know what? This may not be the sexiest answer, but I have to be fair. I don't think we have a fair answer yet. Like I just really don't think we've seen enough. I feel like with K getting injured his first season, with Jaden Ivey, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, coming off the bench in favor of Killian Hayes, starting off on a bad foot. Like, I just don't think Preach. we've seen enough to definitively make a decision yet. I think I understand people are sitting there, like, ready to think about these young pieces to kick off and, oh, who can we trade and whatever. I understand the impatient window that fans have, but I feel like we don't have a lot of answers to some of these questions yet. Now, we know how these players need to get better. And yes, we do need to see these two work better together on the floor. They both need to get better defensively, defending without fouling, uh, cutting down on turnovers, working on efficiency, finishing at the rim, and moving without the ball, which to me, I think stood more to coaching. Monty Mm -hmm. has to do a better job of getting these questions answered for us. I don't think we have an answer to that. I know this is a rapid fire. I'm not trying to overkill this answer, but I just don't think it's an We said, well, I don't want to speak for you, King, but I went on a rant before you got on. I went on a little mini rant, and I was saying the same exact right, thing. Right. Yep. They played 68 games together out of a total 164 possible. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? <laughs> like, see, like see, you're ready to punt already? It just, it just doesn't make, it doesn't make There's... any sense to me, bro. Absolutely not. And I think like we just saw a perfect example of, of how patience can pay off. I know it's not a perfect example yes. of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. But the girl, it took them seven years. They're not a perfect fit. Mm-hmm. They didn't come into the league as lockdown defenders or, or top level defenders. It didn't happen. They needed to learn. They needed time. They needed pieces around them. We don't have that. We have not had that. So how can you judge these guys without <laughs> any of those variables? James Edwards couldn't have said it better with fans not being able to stomach a rebuild. Now, while we sit up here worried about wins being the end goal, there are some things you can look at with these players. like. Think about what Jay Ivey's jump shot looked like when he came into the league compared to what it looks like right now. Think mm-hmm. about Jalen Dern coming into the league being a, what, 50% free throw shooter, and then this past season he's over 70%. Good point. That is unbelievable. At his age in his second season, like those are some things that people can look at. Cade putting up all-star numbers, finding a fine techio, like finding things mm-hmm. because great. While you don't have wins to look at, you got to pay attention to the fine details. And people don't want to do that for Piston basketball, but that's why we sit here on these platforms to talk about it Facts. because we saw the growth and I think there is opportunity for these to grow. Like we saw Cade and Ivy play great in that Portland game on the road where they got a win. Two yeah. 30 ball games against the Pacers together. Like there have been flashes. It. Just give it some time and I think we still need a little bit more time to get that solidified answer. 
absolutely bro bro so just to kind of reiterate what we had talked about earlier the biggest for me one of the biggest differences other than just being a better team the biggest difference between dallas and boston they asked jason kidd Kyrie irving and luka Doncic the same question right what at the end of the day what was the biggest variable biggest difference between you guys winning and losing these finals they all said the same thing bro one word you already said it time that's it he said we've been together five months trying to figure this out since we got these guys pj washington and all these different guys and they've been together seven years it takes time man if, if you're gonna build it out right you have to let it play out and you can't judge Jaden ivy bro as a rookie we we're just talking about this as a rookie bro lost the best lost his running mate the best player in the team 11 games to the season yep right and that season was i think we had 27 and 28 different starting lineups so you're asking a rookie guard not point guard because he's still learning that position a rookie guard to come and play point guard when you're shuffling guys in and out of the lineup one week they're in the g league the next week they're back how do you build any chemistry how do you know where guys like the ball how do you know anything how do you know guys timing you can't even have conversations with them because you don't know if they're going to be playing with you the next night so how and you're judging a rookie guard off of that and he still gave you 15 and 5 in a role that he's not used to as well in a role that he's not used to as a rookie Bro. in the leagues getting used to the nba off the court getting used to playing 82 games and not 30 something you know what i'm saying it's a whole nother world man it's a lot for a rookie guard to deal with so let's give him time with the best player with our best player give them time let them have one season bring arnie kander back as somebody said make sure they're both healthy and have them play a full season 60 plus yeah. games <laughs> let them build let him cook. Boy, who would have ever thought there would be a time where where King didn't have to preach patience? Everybody else here. This is beautiful. <laughs> we got your back, bro. We got your on this one. Harder than in TV and watch you You don't want to see bust up watch you Breaking records set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time, he's got a plan, yeah. Let all by none other than his brother Cannon. If this is more than a game, it's a passion. Why they see we working? Close up my action. Jay, then I'll be on the way and get that put around. Electrifying through the air, I did your shot. And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him. That boy is poison. It's in his